So, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Siemens booth, and welcome to Hanover from Mesa 2018. I hope everybody here is feeling good so far. Great to see such a large audience here. You're at the right place at the right time if you want to know what is new when it comes to digitalization. Now, our program this year not only includes a number of interesting presentations about the development, of course, and about innovations from almost all areas and all departments, divisions at Siemens. We're talking about aerospace, like we just saw before, is the first topic we'll be getting into in a couple of moments. Energy supply, process automation, discrete and process industries, and so forth and so forth throughout the entire day. So it's really going to be very interesting. Besides that, though, this year for the first time, we are also hosting the so-called MindSphere Open Space Challenge. Now, this was basically an open invitation to any developer out there uh, to come up with a solution for a actual use case from our clients. And the best developer teams have been invited to present their solution live in front of an audience and a jury, which will take place at uh, 1 o'clock today. So you might want to keep that in mind also. Up to three challenges per day, and the winner will be announced at the end of every challenge. Besides this, Every presentation will be streamed and recorded, um, so please go to the YouTube channel uh, and feel free to watch uh, the rest of the presentations if you don't have time to stick around the entire day. So let's get into the first topic. Like I said before, latest developments in the area of digital enterprises for manufacturing industries is what we'll be talking about now. And uh, for this, I'd like to bring up our expert with a big round of applause. Here is Magnus Edholm. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much. Nice to have you, Magnus. Nice to be back. Nice to be back in Hanover. Also from my side, thank you and welcome to Hanover. Busiest time of the year, but also probably the best time of the year. Yeah, you're looking forward to this, aren't I you? I do, I do, I do. <laughs> so what's it all about? Digitalization. What? Yeah. It's actually all about digitalization. You've probably seen that as you walk across the booth. There's so many things happening. I mean, I put some buzzwords up here. Generative uh, design. We've got artificial intelligence. We've got advanced robotics, additive manufacturing, edge computing. And whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's typical Magnus, I have to yeah. say, all right? He starts it off with all these fancy words. Uh, give it yeah. to us, give it to us. OK, so okay, that, I'm going to You know, everybody can understand. Breathe, I'm breathe. Calm okay. down. So if we take generative design as an example, it's a our way of mimicking nature's way of designing things as a, a big thing. You can see it also on the booth over here. Uh, we're approaching individualization. We're all individuals. We all want our special products made for us to fit our needs. That's one thing. Advanced robotics, uh, collaborative robots, and so on and so forth. And perhaps also virtual commissioning, where you virtually commission a production line in a digital environment before you go live. So what is it in for industry, though? For the industry, I, I actually have two examples of that. If we take first a machine builder, mm -hmm. um, thanks to digitalization, they are able to commission their machines twice as fast as without this digital digitalization offering. And also, Chris, I'm not sure, have you ever considered buying your own jet engine? <laughs> Uh, no, no, not really. Oh, sorry, for, because I did not know this when we started this project. But also, the a jet engine is actually strongly and heavily customized. So, what is the what is the common success factor we're looking for here? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, all those companies have embraced the opportunities that come with digital uh, digitalization and become what we call a digital enterprise. And uh, what that means, Chris, is that those companies are able to react to those uh, classic requirements, taking an innovation, an idea to the market as fast as possible, uh, being able to offer that flexibility I mentioned in regards to the, your or airplane mm -hmm. engine, mm -hmm. the flexibility, yet producing with high quality, take advantage of the resources they have available, optimize the performance, and get even more efficient. And uh, also, if you've seen above us, we have the MindSphere, the cloud technology. And cloud technology has opened up the new business models. And also in this day and age, it's probably more important than ever to protect your uh, intellectual property. So is it actually possible to achieve all of that, all the stuff you're talking about? That is a very good question. And uh, yes, it, uh, it is, it is. So we at Siemens, we take on this holistic approach to the challenges that I just spoke about. And we can see it in this uh, arrow, going from product design to services, which is kind of a value creation chain, if you like, both for the end customer and also for a machine builder and or a line builder. What is important to know here it's that um, 
you can start anywhere in this value chain with the digitalization, be it in the production, be it in design. Uh, the important part is that you actually get going with digitalization and also for a brownfield optimization or if you build a complete new plant. Well, thank you for, for, for laying out the plan so far. I think I'm going to leave it to you, Captain Magnus. All right. Uh, enjoy the flight. We'll be back after. Yeah, so uh, arm slides, cross the report, and uh, cabin crew prepare for takeoff. So how do you do this? Well, we're working with a concept that we call the digital twins. So when you have the data flowing back and forth, then this digital twin occurs. And it's um, actually present in three different shapes the digital twin of the product, the digital twin of the production, and the digital twin of the performance. And um, I'd like to show you what I actually mean uh, with an example of, from the aerospace industry. If you have walked on this booth in the central part, 50 meters that way, you will see a big courtyard where we only show topics related to aerospace. Therefore, I've chosen this. And why don't we start with the digital twin of the product. Uh, using this, approach, we design, we simulate, and test our product in a virtual environment before we actually build it. And uh, let's take a look at this product. That's a nose cone from an, an existing airplane, designed with our solution NX. Simulation has been carried out with SimCenter. And we can actually see if the landing gear is working the way it's supposed to be doing, extended and raised, etc., and so on. And when we fly, which I assume most of you have done, when we're going down for landing, you have slight turbulence. And that's turbulence being shown there. So we're simulating how the landing gear is affected by turbulence. That's not a fire. It looks like a fire. It's not. It just shows the strength of the simulation. So no need to be scared. And also when the landing gear is, is uh, uh, inside the airplane, how that also affects the whole thing. And you also know, if you look around, that uh, electronics and automation plays a very important role in pretty much every machine or product coming out in the market. And with our latest family member here at Siemens with Mentor Graphics, we also have the solutions to simulate and validate electronic components, also here completely integrated in our NX solution suite. I won't go any deeper in the digital twin now. So what we have now, we have a product, a digital twin of the product. And this data we want to use when we go into the production phase, kind of pushing this data forward in the production planning area. And this is a picture or a movie from our team center environment. Team center manages a lot of data. Uh, easily explained, it manages product data, process data, resource data, and plant data. And we basically connect those items within team center giving us the ability to, for example, also create electronic work instructions that we then can push down to the shop floor at the right station at the right time, making sure the right product is being produced. In a plant, we also have equipment. And with our line design solution, you can easily create and lay out your manufacturing equipment on the shop floor. Simply drag and drop, in this case, a robot. And you can also see here that you have the reach envelopes in the robot. And we use this data further on down the line. Automation is big, but we still have manual workstations, where, for example, in this case, Jack comes into play. Will his hand fit between or behind this piping on the engine? Will it fit there? Sure. But if he wears a glove, how does that affect it? Can it fit the tool in there? How's the ergonomics of him working with this? Uh, exercise. Do we need to change everything? This is a good example of a digital twin in action working with Jack. And also for the complete assembly of an airplane, um, you have parts coming in. In this case, we have a wing assembly. You want to make sure that everything flows the way it's supposed to be. You don't want to have any collisions in your factory. And with a solution like this, you can, before you go live, make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to be working. So we got the 3D digital twin of a production facility. And you know, Siemens are working a lot with automation. And obviously, we want to take that opportunity also to work with a real or proper digital twin, um, basically validating the PLC code um, in, the, uh, uh, in a digital environment. And in order to get that PLC code, we're working with our solution, Automation Designer, an integrated solution for engineering of electronic and automation components. And, um, Going on approach with uh, going forward with uh, automation desi uh, designer, it creates you create 
complex engineering solutions with higher quality and less time. And you basically push this information from Automation Designer into the TIA portal. And that's what speeds up the process. And when we got everything in there, then we go with the virtual commissioning phase. We can do it two ways. We can do it with hardware in the loop, as we call it, when you have a physical controller and a digital model of, in this case, a machine or an airplane. Um, you can also do it in the software in the loop approach, where you have a solution with similar to Mechatronics Concept Designer, which is a simulation tool. You have PLC Sim Advanced. You got Simit, and uh, those tools work it together. And there you have the virtual commissioning of the airplane. And once everything is validated, you push the data back into the TIA portal, and from there down to the shop floor. So it's a very fast commissioning of your production machine or your product. It's also very important to um, separate assembly manufacturing and part manufacturing. The approach is similar. Uh, so you have here a robot doing an additive manufacturing operation. This is actually the, the nose of uh, the airplane being printed in 3D. So this is a totally new way of also doing this type of manufacturing. This part is called a radom. And inside this, you have a radar equipment and all those things that's important for the navigation of an airplane. So once you've proven this to work in a digital environment, we simply go to the real thing. And there you have the robot actually producing this part for real. And this radom can also be seen uh, in the digital enterprise software courtyard. So with that, now we're ready to go in to the real production area, the twin of the real production and the performance. And, um, you know that uh, Siemens has been in this area for, many, for a long time. Simatic is turning 60 years this uh, year. And once more, since we've validated everything digitally, we can be sure everything is working the way it's supposed to be doing. And those components can obviously be seen around the booth in our totally integrated automation concept. Everything from controller, from the Simatic family, and pretty much everything around you here, all the way down to Sumeric controller on a tooling machine. Software do also play a fairly important role in the manufacturing. Uh, with our Simatic IT portfolio, you have the ability to do what we call advanced planning and scheduling, basically optimizing the ordering uh, in what order you are to produce your product. We got electronic work instructions. We got quality management systems. Because it's really important that we actually build quality. We don't control quality. So throughout the manufacturing process, we make sure that we are keeping our quality targets, since that is obviously something that also saves a lot of time and eventually a lot of money. So at this point, the production is up and running. Everything is happy. We're producing parts and products, but also data. And this data is extremely important, because that is what gives us the opportunity to go with new business models. And I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure you heard about it. Mindsphere, our open IoT uh, solution. And there we have managed, in this case, managed my machines, which is controlling the machines in many different locations around the globe, see how they perform, making sure that you have the result or the output that you actually want to have. So that's from the, from the production perspective. The same goes for what we call, talk about, we talk about pro product intelligence. It's also a mind app. And um, in this movie, uh, to tie back to the aerospace scenario, we can evaluate what's happening with the landing gear. We are landing in rough weather. And this is based on a huge amount of data that has been collected around the globe. And in just a few seconds, we can get a result and see how the landing has been affected. And, and you may wonder, so why do you want to know this? Well, the thing is, based on this data, you can schedule your service intervals. You don't have to have them fixed. You basically look at the data. How is the, the landing gear affected by this rough landing? And then we can push this information back also into the process to further develop the whole product. So with that, we come to kind of the ending of my presentation. Stay put. Uh, so now we have the ability to, to take data from both the product, how it performs, and from the production facility, and push this back in the product development and in also into the production development. So this is just not going one way, because this approach 
also gives us the ability to do foresight. So we can look also in the future, making sure that we have this continuous improvement, because that is definitely essential for successful manufacturing. And this is uh, only doable with our solutions from Siemens, and we call it the Digital Enterprise Suite. And it's a combination of industrial software and automation solutions based on Team Center as a collaboration platform, and also working very closely with Mindsphere for the data collection, and basically a way of merging the virtual and the real world. So with that, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the flight to the, to the digitalization town city. Um, and with that, I also hope you to, I encourage you to implement now. Come and talk to me, come and talk to my colleagues in the Digital Enterprise Suite area, in the central area of the booth. We'd be more than happy to answer any question you have about software, about automation, about any type of industry, because we have the specialist is over there. So with that, Chris, you're welcome back on board. All right, let's give it up. Thank you very much, Magnus Edhan.